Everybody talk about World War Two, you know, you know Hitler. Well, he, he put on a good show, <laughs> you know. So right, everybody, right, everybody, right. everybody's on riding the, the jock of World War Two. Yeah, everybody used to talk about Hitler's concerts and everything. You know, he put bad. He put on a show. I ain't gonna say whether it's good or not, but he put on a show. When you think about it, war is really horrible when you just don't have the technology to make right? it, to make it less miserable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's talk about this for a minute. Why? We've got orders to cross here. That is the German front line. Our grandfathers and, and great grandfathers had to do World War II in the trenches and in the cold and shit. Today, mother practically playing video games. Uh-huh. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> pew flying drones over. Uh-huh. Doing shit we do for fun. Yeah. You know, flying drones over, bombing people from remote places. You know, mm-hmm. things like that. It's easy. Easier than ever, man. Yeah. You know, as long as you're not a target. <laughs> That's why people say that World War I and things like the Civil War and things like that, but particularly World War I, that was a horrible war, man. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that was something where the death was more grisly, you know, the, the conditions more grueling mm-hmm. because, you know, because, because you had less technology to deal with, you know, Bullets hurt more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? If you got a splinter in your hand, they just cut it off with a saw. Yeah, with a saw. And you just cut, can't cut the finger off? No. <laughs> hey, hey, got to go. Hey, can, you, can you put me out first? <laughs> Man, we ain't got time for that. Mm-mm, no. Just bite on this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> By the other arm that we already cut off. <laughs> I mean, at least during like the Civil War, they gave you whiskey or something. Yeah. Here they said, here, bite on this rock. <laughs> 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 yeah. It was <laughs> horrible, horrible time. That World War One. And there was death everywhere. Oh, yeah. That was the thing about it. I mean, it, you know, we got drone warfare today, but pilots had a, they had eyesight like a mother. They could spot somebody from you know uh-huh. twenty miles away and, and 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 just eviscerate them in a hell of bullet fire. Landmines everywhere, bombs being dropped all over the place. People hiding in ditches and trenches waiting to blow you away. So, you know, it's kind of messed up when they approach two people, they ain't even twenty five yet. And they yeah, say, and they teenagers. say, hey, you know what? We got this letter right here. Run this shit across the street. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ah, it ain't that much. Hey, come here, Slick. <laughs> yeah. Want to make yourself five bucks? Run us across the street. Yeah, it ain't nothing. No, it's just right. Hey, it's a feel, man. You know, you can look at the flowers and shit on your way. Just, just, <laughs> it's, it's a letter. No, you, and plus, you ain't got a choice. And that was, that's what happens with two soldiers that we have right here. Two young soldiers. They are tasked with the, the heavy, heavy, but very important mission of going and telling a couple of platoons, maybe three, I think, call, was, I think it was four. Was it four? Damn, four. Yeah. Shit, let's just go five. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a dozen platoons out uh-huh. there to tell them, hey, look, I know that you think you got the Germans on the run. I know that you think you're ready for the attack, but that shit is a trap. Call it off or else everybody is going to die. Yeah. Now imagine saying, and can you do this in, I don't know, three hours? <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. That, you know, can you be like Domino's Pizza and do uh-huh. this 30 minutes or uh-huh. less? Yeah, yeah. The two of you run across what could be enemy territory. Yeah. In, we don't know. In, in a day. Yeah. In a day, hey. And, and if, if you don't make it, uh, 1,600 guys, including your brother, are going to die. Exactly. exactly. Gruesomely. So, yo, think you got this? <laughs> I look, look, these guys are like, what the f***? <laughs> 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 I, I, I love that. I mean, it, it, this heavy, heavy mission to where one guy's even like, man, f- that. And it's like, yeah, but your brother's there too, so. Yeah, they put the guilt trip on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, f- that. Oh, did I say your brother was over there? Oh, f- <laughs> I don't even like that, man. <laughs> Jeez, he used to beat my ass in here. <laughs> Family. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer for 1917, directed by the great Sam Mendez. Hey, great premise. It's a war film. Huge spectacle, great director. It's got to be good, right? We'll let you know right after this. You have a brother in the 2nd Battalion. You mother... (laughs) (laughs) That's why you picked me out. So don't even even think about not saying... Not doing (laughs) this. Look at them both. He's like, you son of a bitch. Let's talk about this for a minute. Why? (laughs) He's even like, man, let's just run. (laughs) Look, um, I don't want to be like this, but... 
it's not my brother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> shit, I don't know that mother. And then he pulled that shit in. Well, if you were my friend. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> you know the NFL looking like, damn, I wish that no. was playing for us. No, everybody keeps talking about when you read this and any kind of big war movie that comes out, everybody keeps talking about the horrors of, of war. You know, that's a that's pretty much a quote right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Or that's pretty much a, just a, uh, even a phrase. Oh, the horrors of war. And this is, you know, war and war depicted in this movie. It is horrible. You know, but the way people are going on, if you read about this movie in reviews or anywhere else, you know, they're going to make you think that you're about to watch a movie that's filled with violence, death, dying in an oppressive and a depressing environment. And it is. And it's entertaining, man. I thought you were gonna, I thought you were gonna say, and it's not. Cause I was like, I don't know what movie you saw. No, no, man. Let me let, let me just let me just uh, let me just say this right now. I usually save my wrap up. I'm not even doing a like a, a big wrap up here, but I'm just gonna give you my quick impression of the movie right now. Cause y'all are looking at this and y'all are thinking, man, I don't want to go watch this old British shit. <laughs> This old period piece. You know, wait, man, where's Hitler? <laughs> you know, unless I see a Nazi with a badass leather coat on or something, you know. Well, I now, now, Wonder Woman made World War One cool again. And there you go. Where's the superheroes? <laughs> you know, where, where's Captain America? Where's Wonder Woman? You know, where's the Red Skull? Anyway, I don't want to watch this shit. There's a reason why you don't hear about World War One in movies. This shit looks boring. Let me tell you right now. Whatever you're thinking that might, might even be remotely negative about this movie, you drop that right now. Stop it. Drop it right now and see this. And see this on the best possible screen with the best sound system that you can. This movie is amazing. I was completely blown away watching this movie the entire time. And listen, you know, if you don't, if, if war films are not your thing, you don't like seeing. You don't like seeing dead bodies, blood and guts, graphic violence. I understand. Frozen 2 is right next door. Go watch that <laughs> shit. That's fine. But, if, you know, and I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound uh, insensitive or desensitized to war movies. You know, and like I said, you know, these, they, it was a horrible thing. But, uh, you know, I, I have to say that uh, as far as uh, the horrors of war, I've probably seen more horrible things in Call of Duty, the video game. You know, I, I because if you, you know if you're looking at this, and especially if you're going in and, and you wanna, you're thinking that you're gonna see the the like the level of violence or gore that you would see in a horror movie. I've seen that in other movies, uh, much done much worse. Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, boy, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saving Private Ryan. I mean, it, it, it's a landmark movie because it was the first one to really show the gore of war. Yeah, and it it reveled in it. Oh yeah, no, that shit was a horror movie. I remember, I knew absolutely nothing mm-hmm. about Saving Private Ryan. This is one of the first times I started going to morning screenings, mm-hmm. and they showed that they they knew it was an Oscar contender, so they showed it way early. Yeah, I think I, I had to, I missed it then. I had to see it in the theater. No, you missed it because what they even had to bring it in on an armored truck. We had to wait for a little while because it was such a it was a movie that was that they knew was going to win an Oscar, mm-hmm. and they brought it in under a lot of guards and whatnot. And so we had to wait a little bit. And the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, so I had time to think. While I sit down, like, well, Spielberg's name is on this, and you know, this is going to be surely this is going to be like a nice. Sweet natured Spielberg. And this is gonna be so nice. It's gonna have some nice big moral message at the end. Everybody's gonna be holding hands and man, 15 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> I was ducking this shit. <laughs> I was that freaked me the fuck out. Yeah. I said, this is Spielberg? Yeah. You should have said Wes Craven <laughs> directing this or Cause you remember when the you, at the beginning of the movie, like they show people with their faces blown oh, out yeah. and people just uh, oh, getting yeah. their jaw was, shot off. Constantly, the, the guys were throwing up. You know, this mm-hmm. is when they were about to storm Normandy, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Okay, this is this is not the Spielberg I'm used to seeing right here. Where, where, where's Spielberg at? <laughs> <laughs> this is. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to do this no more." <laughs> 
<laughs> Can I go home? <laughs> but the reason why I say this, you see a lot of, uh, you do see a lot of, there's a little bit of gore, dead bodies everywhere of all types. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that, th- that was more of it, just the death all around, the dead bodies, and, and really having to wait in it. And there's something that happens early on with one of the characters in a dead body that just, it made me squirm and it took me to the rest of the day to get over it. And that's I know. early in the film. Yeah, it's early in the movie, man. And so that's it's not I even say. gory, but it's just one. It's just so visceral. It's just like, oh, oh man. You can hear the whole audience. They just said, just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you nasty. Uh. It's just one of those, man. That's the last thing you wanted to have happen right at that. I wish I could say what it was. It was just so yeah, like it's- Jesus. It was just like, y'all are having a really bad day. <laughs> and it just started. Wow. God <laughs> hates you. <laughs> he picked you for this shit, and it just keeps getting worse. You know, just, y'all need, the best thing that happened to y'all right now is y'all could get shot. Right. <laughs> so y'all don't have to do with, deal with this anymore, man. Uh, but this is not as gory as, no, as no. Saving Private no, Ryan. It's other, not. It's uh, not. other movies. It's not. Uh, Hamburger Hill, Platoon. Mm-hmm. It's not. And I think the reason why is because this movie... To me, you know, it might be people might read it a different way, and I like to hear what you even consider this movie to be. But for me, one of the reasons why I enjoyed it so much as a war film is because it still feels more like an adventure. That's what that's what I was gonna say. That to, to, this is a war adventure. Yeah, it's it's a man on a mission movie mm-hmm. going from point A to point B. In fact, you, there's a moment where I expect to see hobbits walking besides him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they just walking. You yeah. know, some Lord of the Rings yeah. mission type shit. Yeah. You know, like I said, at the beginning of the movie, you know, they're telling, they're telling these uh these two uh these two young soldiers, man. Uh and you and you really fear for them too. They're telling these two young soldiers here. And I'll tell you the names in a little bit. I, I forgot at the moment, but these two young sh- soldiers, they they tell them, they say, hey, listen, it's a it's a real simple mission. Just take this letter. And just run across the field. Male men do this every day. <laughs> and I'm like, bitch, they ain't getting shot at. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're not getting bombed. Nah, they, at. They're not, they, they don't soft soap it. They, 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 they <laughs> you see a look on, on, uh, on Colin's face, just like, listen, boys, this is serious. And yeah. you, you got to do this. And, and every other soldier is like, you going where? Over there. Oh, shit. Good luck. I, I like the way he picked it too, because he's like, you know what? Y'all don't do nothing off goddamn day, but lay on your ass. <laughs> Seem like you know, that. I'm kind of hoping y'all die on the way. <laughs> He's like, y'all don't do a goddamn thing, man. I know, in the lilies in the field, sleeping. And I like the way they sent him too. They sent him. They said, look, you got directions. Here's a can of beans and some cheese. Get the uh, f- out of here. Yeah, yeah. Quick. Yeah. Yeah. They gave them very little to very work little. with. And that alone uh, makes uh, it. Uh, yeah. It's like nobody wanted to help him. They were, like, they were almost like the other soldiers, like. Well, you ain't coming back, so they should do. When I say it's not gory, I don't mean to say that it's not intense. Uh, it's it, nothing but intense. It's extremely I, intense. I I think once they once they started walking, I, <laughs> yeah, it was an hour before I took a breath. I was I was I was I was on the edge of my seat, holding my breath all through it. They they had one moment to to take a breather, and then <laughs> shit was back on again. But I'm thinking, man, we just walking. Why am I so nervous right now? And it didn't take long for me to realize, like, wait a minute. We ain't cut to another shot yet. We ain't had one reaction shot. Oh, yeah, shot. yeah, no, it's, a, it's the full continuous shot it's, throughout the entire movie. Yeah, and when you, and when and, you do and doing that. doing it like that, yeah, it keeps you on edge. Well, it keeps you on edge, but it puts you right there with them. Mm-hmm. Like, everything is in real time. So yeah. you're walking into this mission having time to think, like, man, I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, you guys have to really think about it. <laughs> it puts you in the mindset mm-hmm. of what they're doing. And it's amazing to listen to how they do the camera work here. I mean, you know, this is, this is nothing new, but this is a little different for what they do in this movie. Now, I, I will explain why. Sometimes you have a camera being carried by an operator across more land which carries him another 400 yards and he steps off it again and goes around the corner. Steady cam guy, by the end of the movie, he's just, <laughs> right? <laughs> shit, I can't hold this shit no more. <laughs> get, get it, get it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to see what they do with this. Now, it's not one continuous shot, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But also, I know that this is nothing original. I mean, we've seen this now be done in a lot of films, even films that we don't even hear about. There are movies now that do it. You know, one of the most popular 
Birdman because Birdman, yeah. Birdman won, won an Oscar man you know and, and, and that was the big selling point about how this was just one incredible shot you know before Birdman people always talked about the, the one that they think and I'm not sure if this is the one that originated it but it was one of Hitchcock's big uh, experimental films oh right right, uh, right. Rope oh ro- okay Dramatic as <laughs> <laughs> rope. Fuck no book. Yeah, he did, not like, did not like those books. <laughs> ah, <laughs> these books. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ed, Edward G. Robinson. That was not. Yeah, Jimmy that was not Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know they've been doing this with a lot of movies, man. You know, for, and in different genres, you have mysteries, you have dramas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember I saw an art house movie, Russian Ark. You ever see that movie? No. It's pretty much a one shot movie. It's really just showing off artistic set pieces, and it's all just them going from one room to another in one continuous shot. I think with that though, I think they didn't. I'm not sure. Maybe I don't think they cheated. I think they actually did it in one shot because everybody cheats by. Look, if you walk, if you're watching a movie where they say this is one continuous shot, we didn't cut. Wait for them to go around a dark corner. Right, right, right. Cut. <laughs> yeah, of course, you know. Of course, of course. So that's why I say this is not really well, they, one they, shot. They, they don't. Yeah, like I said, that's why I said it was it was a, a faux continuous shot. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. They, you know, they you know they they cheated some here and there, but the movie is not even really about that. No, it, and I'm not even putting it down for that. Right? No, I oh, no, I know you aren't. I know you aren't. And just for anybody who's like, man, they didn't even do that. It's like that's not really the point. It's 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 used. For the effect of putting you right there on this mission with these boys, so you don't get to have the luxury of second of, of backseat driving or or Monday morning quarterback and going like, well, what they should do is this. Well, yeah, I was there. I was thinking, and it's like, no, no. you're there. So no. what you gonna do? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do now that you got pressure on you? Not a goddamn thing. Because <laughs> I was sitting up there Good crying. Just, yeah, yeah, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Because it's just it's the illusion of one shot, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. you know it's it's not meant to actually be one shot. But you got to understand that even with this just being you know uh, just a series of of shots, kind of being strung together to give the illusion of one shot, the length of those one sh- of, of those certain shots mm-hmm. where they don't cut yeah. is incredible. It is incredible. It's amazing what they do because they do they go a long time without cutting. Man, they even say that this is a tough movie to make because. Everybody, from the actor to the cinematographer to everybody on set, they got one chance to get certain things right. Mm. If it doesn't work, they have to keep going. Yeah, you know, they have to learn how to improvise, go with it, hope they can cut around it. It's a very hard, it's it's a very hard condition to uh, to shoot in. And as far as <clears throat> hard condition, just what everybody, the crew and the actors had to go through, wading in all this mud and muck. <laughs> I didn't yeah. feel. I didn't envy anybody. <laughs> everybody got tetanus shot after this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody was just covered in shit after this, man. It's a. This is probably a tough shoot. I mean, it is. Not even probably. The thing about doing a, a film like this, because this is a war film. And I've hardly, I don't think I've seen any war films where they've done it in one shot. No. And you know, and and to give the illusion of one shot, uh, what they have to do is they can't start scenes. And they can't cut and go to a next scene and set another scene up mm-hmm. like they like they do in a regular movie. Mm-hmm. You know, what they have to do here is, well, you know, there, there are moments here where they, they have to introduce things creatively. They have to, and, and it does make the movie even more creative when they have to do that. You know, you because with them, the great thing about them having to be creative with these scenes that they go into, it adds <coughs> even more to the intensity. Every time they go into a scene or a new area, you get you you have the same sense of uncertainty that they do. Yeah, you know I remember there was one scene, just a shadowy figure just walked out of nowhere, just walking towards oh, the I screen, know. and I was looking like, okay, do I shoot this motherfucker does he, does he, before he shoots me? Right, because <laughs> you're like, okay, he's in the shadow, he's not running at me. Is he one of my guys? Yeah, do I shoot him? Or do I wait to be shot? Do I say hey, hello? <laughs> you know, I don't, you know, and and, and it made me do. What I hate seeing other people do in the movie theater, that is talk to the screen. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm Martin, I'm not bullshitting you. That's you laughing, but I'm not bullshitting. I'm so glad that I was, there was, now if you saw me in the movie, there was nobody sitting next to me. Uh-huh. And I'm so glad they weren't because I was actually tapping air and saying, let's go. <laughs> you know, I was trying to talk to the character on the screen. Let's get out, let's go. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, and I'm not even lying. This was like I felt myself doing things, yeah, you know, yeah, like trying yeah. to help. Them, like, man, get yeah. out of here. Yeah, yeah. It 
it's, a, it's, it's incredible, man. This is something that's really easy to come in if you haven't seen the movie. And I wouldn't blame you, man. But it's really something that you can easily dismiss as a gimmick. It, it, you know, I, I see it as not a gimmick because, one, the movie would work even with, without them doing that. Yeah, yeah. But it enhances it having them do it. And they don't really call attention to it. No, no, it's not that. It, it's, it's something that you just sort of <clears throat> notice. It's not the big selling point. Yeah, it's not. It wasn't anything when the when the trailers uh, came out. It wasn't like the incredible one shot achievement of Sam Mendes. You know, it was, they didn't mm. tell you any of that. Mm -hmm. They left that for you to discover in the film. Mm -hmm. so I'm sure some people were at home and they woke up in the middle of the night like, "Hey, wait, hey, a, wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah, that was one shot." <laughs> Boy, if you don't get your ass back to bed. <laughs> Sorry, but this is done by. Someone who's used to working with Sam Mendes. Of course, Sam Mendes is the guy that did Skyfall, something they mentioned in the trailer. Sam Mendes. I mean, I'm sorry, Ro Roger Deakins. Roger Deakins, Roger yeah, Deakins is the guy that worked with Sam Mendes on here. And, you know, uh, listen, y'all, just to give you an idea of, of what they had to work with in this, uh, in this movie here, I can barely start this show on time. And all I got to do is just drive here. <laughs> you know, and, and by the way, when I'm driving here, I ain't got no explosions, uh -huh. no special effects uh -huh. out there, uh -huh. no, no practical effects blowing up around me, anything uh -huh. like that. I don't have to worry about the weather, <laughs> whether it's, you know, it's perfect conditions or not. Mm -hmm. uh, this movie here, man, uh, they had to actually make sure everything was coordinated from the, the crew right down. Think about this. The crew to special effects. Oh, yeah. The practical explosions that they had to work with. Mm -hmm. A sea of of extras yeah. running across the field, you know, all of that had to be coordinated, and they all had to make that work together. Now, keep in mind that those are things that they actually can't control. You know, clouds you can't control. That's true. You know, the sun you can't tell the sun. Can you just hold on while I get this shot real quick? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they couldn't do that, and they even say that we just couldn't shoot on certain days. We had to just rehearse because. We, the, if, if we were shooting on days where it was cloudy and then the sun came out, there would be no consistency. No location ever repeats. <laughs> Constantly moving through landscapes. Very dependent on the light and the weather. We have to shoot in cloud to get the continuity from scene to scene. They had to shoot in order, too. You know, They didn't have the luxury of shooting certain scenes when mm -hmm. conditions would work for them. Yeah. And then editing it all back together, you know. They had to shoot in order. So, yeah, man, it's... Uh, it's that, that I say all of this because the movie could kind of get by on technical achievement alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if they chose to just kind of show you a, a film follow where you're following two guys, they didn't really have to have that much of a story, but they do. They do. They do. For those who were saying that Dunkirk didn't give you that emotional attachment, you know where we're going into war, George. This is the opposite of that. You know, this is something where they they want to actually uh, they want to. Uh, uh, make you feel exactly what these 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 soldiers are feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, they want you to be on this journey with them so that you can actually be in their mindset. When you actually are with these guys, and that's the scene I was talking about right there, man, uh, where uh, the guy walks out the shadows right there. Yeah, oh yeah, no, I know what you meant. He walked out the fire like the like that Terminator in T2. In T in T yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, watching this uh, with... Dunkirk, that's more. You're more of a spectator. Violence and war is more of a spectator sport, right there. This uh, death takes on a whole new meaning here. Yeah, you feel every death that happens around you because and, you have to experience it. Like and these everything guys. is so unpredictable. Yeah, it, yeah. It, you, yeah, you know, death and dangers around every corner. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, but well, maybe I'm gonna get a catch a break. And sometimes you, you catch a little break, but not much of one. But not not for long, not at all. You know, uh, um, one of the things that you have to know about the movie, also going into it. You know, if you're going in here expecting to see the further adventures of Rob Stark, <laughs> are you, are you a big uh, Richard Madden fan? Uh huh. Then you're gonna be highly disappointed because this is he's he, I, let me I don't want to spoil anything but he's hardly in the movie. Yeah, he has a very small part. Very small part. Yeah, all the, the big name actors have very small parts. Yeah. Almost cameos. Mhm. Mm no, the, if you were not the two I mean they are cameos really. Yeah. Yeah, no, if you are They're just important characters, but they're the cameo appearances. If you in the movie, if you were not the uh the 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 two main characters here. If you're not these two guys, George McKay, he's the one on the left and Dean Charles Chapman, he's the guy on the right. 
those are the those are the two uh, uh, corporals that are on this mission here. Um, if you're not if you're not them, every you're a walk on. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, you're a cameo. Uh, and they, you know, and that's a shame too because they are the ones that have to really carry this movie. And it's a tough movie to carry. They yeah. have to do oh, yeah. all of the hard work. They're the ones where the responsibility lays the most on them to get that take right. Mm-hmm. That rare, you know, one take right. Uh, with shit blowing up around them. Yeah, crawling through the mud. <laughs> crawling and, through and mud. The, and the dead bodies. Tripping on rocks and <laughs> trying to crawl through barbed wire. Uh-huh. You know, and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's something that they, you know, they, they, they really should be getting more attention for this movie, man. This, this is a, we always talk about how actors might have it easy and whatnot. They do. Once the shoot is done, but this is this was a hard shoot. I can tell, man. Yeah, you and it's it's not one where you go, you know, you know they subbed in stuntmen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do I, get, do I get a stuntman for this? Yeah, you're, like, you're not big enough. Yeah, <laughs> you, you got to do this one. Yeah, they didn't CG them or anything <laughs> like that. And uh, you know, like I said, this is a. Uh, this is where they were always, always crawling through mud or water. Even on days where they couldn't shoot, they got to rehearse. Rehearse what? Oh. Crawling through, crawling your ass through some mud. Crawling through water. Crawling through dirt. You know, it's 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 a uh, a movie where it's doing everything, everything that I want a movie to do. This is this this is brilliant, brilliant filmmaking. It's and, that if if you think you're sick of war movies, see this one. Yeah, I can understand if people watch this and they go into it and they say the adventurous aspect of it throws them off a little bit. You know, you might want a serious war film. And there are, when I say that this is an adventure film, there are action parts in here where it feels a little bit like Indiana Jones. <laughs> a a no. little bit like uh, um, uh, Castle Wolfenstein. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's a bit, because I saw one negative review where the guy compared it to a video game. And I was like, I, I, I got that feel only because it is an adventure with danger around every yeah. corner and it, and it constantly moves. Um, but even if I uh, said that, I would not be saying it in a negative way. No, no. I mean, like like I said, there are parts where they have to, they do have to do video game jumps over a chasm. Like, you know, mm. they, you know, they, you gotta, uh, go, yeah, you they gotta, gotta be, gotta be stealthy. Yeah. You gotta, yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta creep. You gotta be stealthy. Uh, there are big set pieces there that are, that are meant to be very entertaining. I can see people saying, oh, those are, those are amusement park rides and all that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, uh, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm. Co- I, I, it's, it's what you do with it. Like some the, some of the night scenes are gorgeous. I think there's a lot of people who think that it's obligatory for a movie to be just completely oppressive, and it's not. And it's not for you to walk completely out feeling depressed. No, you know. And, and, no, and, no, no. It's 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 not the de- de- depressing at all. It's just it's harrowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 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 tense <laughs> all the way through, but not not depressing. No, no, not at all. And you know, I tell you, uh, like I said, this does everything I want somebody to do in filmmaking. I want it to be great on the technical side, and I want you to see. I want to see some amazing things, but I don't want you. To, I don't want you to treat to, to treat that like that's your your main thing right mm-hmm. there when you have no story, and the story is here from amazing cinematography. Camera movements, camera camera techniques, to a great script and characters that I thought they handled well to to some very very emotional moments. Like I said, you know, every death in here is felt. Mm-hmm. As far as you know, the deaths that we see nearby. Yeah, man. I you know, I, this this might be. I need to sit back and think about it. But like I said, I loved every second of what I was watching. The whole time I was like, wow. I'm I'm loving everything that I'm seeing. I'm trying and I'm trying. I'm trying to talk shit. I'm trying to find something. I was like, I can't. The thing that I said about people finding this maybe a little bit too entertaining, that's my biggest complaint. Wow. Yeah, how about that? Man, too entertaining. <laughs> you did your job too well. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta mark it off of that. Nah, for me, this is a better than sex, man. I um, love this film. Yeah, better than sex, huh? I I do have one complaint about this movie. Okay. Um before seeing this movie. I just about had my top ten movies figured out, and then this came in and just broke the whole God system. Damn and now you! I'm like, now, now I got to squeeze it because it goes and it's in the top five. It could be even in the top three. I have no complaints. This movie is a super high full price. It, I don't. I don't. I. I probably give it better than sex if it made me cry and f- if at the end I didn't tear up on on it. Um, yeah, it's better than sex. Yeah. Yes, people. Sex is not as good as this. <laughs> you can't sex anytime. Yes, this yes. Is a once in a lifetime yeah, yeah, experience. Yeah, exactly. That is my suggestion to you. Before you're about to 
your wife or husband. Mm -hmm. Stop. (laughs) Go see this movie. Could I be seeing 1917? (laughs) (laughs) Do not do this. Do not have sex until you see this movie. And then go back, finish your job, and then tell your wife, you know what? You were not as good as that movie. (laughs) You you, got to step up your game. I'm going to go see the movie again. I'll take you with me so you can see what it's it's Have sex in the theater or watch it. (laughs) Do whatever you got to do, but it's not as good as this. This No, this is a wonderful film, man. I, I bet one of the best of the year. <laughs>